Welcome back. Well, at least I'm starting this earlier than I did last Saturday night, right? By about uh, 15 minutes. So that's something. And I, there's only the two games on Sunday. So, uh, and there's been some big movement on the power rankings. So before tonight's power rankings, I went through, I looked at all the standings. I've also been tracking who's beaten who and who and how and all of that. Um, a lot more tracking for me this year because there's always stuff that I think, well, where's the site to find this info? And sometimes it's not that easy to find. So I figure I might as well track it myself. So Excel spreadsheets. I have fought against Excel spreadsheets because it feels like work, but here we are. All right, one through 32 this week. Let's go ahead and start off. I'm using the same set of pucks I did last week and the week before. I apologize, but um, yeah, it's, it's late. I want to get it done. So number 32 on the board. Same spot as last, or one down from last week, actually. Same spot they were in week one. So week one, San Jose Sharks were 32nd. Last week they were 31st, and this week they are back down to 32nd. So uh, their record, 0-4-1 currently, and it's it's been a long start to the season, as we kind of expected with San Jose. So here we are, here they are, and they're last on the board. Number 31, dropping four spots from last week, Washington. Now, for Washington, the losses are one thing, but when your team looks slow or just like it's it's sort of the, the time has passed for that core. Uh, you know, it's it's depressing on some level, isn't it? And to see Ovechkin and all of these players just this year, just it feels different. Like they're just, it's, it's not the same. The Capitals are not looking anywhere near a playoff team right now. And so they're number 31 on the board. There's plenty of time for them to turn around, but right now it does not look good. Number 30 on the board. I'm very surprised. Dropping six spots from last week is Seattle. So Seattle tonight against the New York Rangers, uh, they, they just didn't get the result. They haven't been getting results. Um, they did get their first win this week, but they're one four and one overall. So uh, their overall record is superseding anything else this week. It's just, it's it's been a rough start to the season. And again, two weeks from now, we will no longer be talking about the start, right? Two weeks from now, we're, we're talking about, well, we're in November and Who's, who looks like a playoff team and who doesn't. So if Seattle's going to turn it around, now's a good time. Uh, number 29, moving up three spots from last week, Anaheim. Now, Anaheim, I still I don't see them as a playoff team. They've only got the one win so far this year, but it does feel like things could be a little bit better. Now, they lost against Arizona today, and Arizona, I think, is, is going to surprise some people. But that being said, uh, Air, Anaheim clearly behind Arizona in the rebuild department. Uh, Leo Carlson's looked very good through his first two games though. So if you're anxious to know when the rebuild's going to end, I think last year's probably the worst of it for Anaheim. This year there should be some more wins and then next year you can look at some real, I would think, gains in the standings. Number 28. Moving up two spots from last week, Chicago. So for the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, they, they of course got that huge win over Toronto and since then uh, well, it was a reality check against Colorado, and then tonight they're against Vegas. So again, you don't expect them to win those games. They're now two and four on the season, and Chicago does move up this week. Uh, they're they're at least not showing that they're just going to give up and and take their ball and go home when things aren't going well. Um, so that's that's something. That's something they can hang their hat on. They don't give up. They still keep playing. And I thought they did well against Vegas for a while there tonight, and then Vegas did Vegas things. Number 27, uh, moving up one spot from last week, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, so for Montreal, uh, they have a 2-1-1 one, one record thus far, so they've only lost one in regulation. Uh, showing a lot of fight too, Montreal Canadiens, and we'll see whether or not uh, they're able to stay in the hunt for a playoff position. Uh, the game against Washington tonight almost got away from them. It didn't, but it almost did. Uh, they end up pulling it out in overtime, but I mean, blowing a two-goal lead, I think they're one of the few teams this year that had a two-goal lead and lost a game, and they almost did it again tonight. So that's one of the things Montreal needs to work on, but we know Montreal's still likely in a rebuild this year. Uh, so it's nice to see Caulfield getting goals and some exciting plays if you're a Montreal fan. Number 26, same spot as last week, St. Louis. Now, the good news for St. Louis is that tonight they showed they could score. Uh, against Pittsburgh, they showed they could score. And that's the first game they've played all season where it looked like the offense was going to happen 
and they were going to score some goals. So hopefully that's a trend they continue. Uh, for St. Louis, of course, there's a lot of doom and gloom around the present and the future of the team from, from some. I don't pile onto that. Uh, I do think there's the possibility of jumping back into a playoff spot, especially with how Bennington's been playing. Yeah, Bennington kind of steals one tonight, although Jari's numbers weren't very good on the other end. But yeah, St. Louis ends up 26 this week. Number 25. And dropping two spots from last week, I really didn't think Buffalo was going to end up in the bottom row this year. I didn't. I didn't think the Buffalo Sabres had any chance of being a team in the bottom row. And yet the 2-3 and three record, they did beat the Islanders tonight. Uh, if they had not beaten the Islanders tonight and they ended up 1-4, and four, we would be looking at them below Montreal and maybe below Chicago. But at this stage, um, I feel comfortable having them 25th. I think that's a good spot for them. And again, you know, hopefully they're able to turn things around and get things going in the right direction. Um, that that is that is a bit of a challenge for them right now. Maybe the Islanders game ends up being that that turnaround that they need. Uh, number twenty four dropping, whopping. This has to be a record. I don't know that a team's ever dropped fifteen spots, but here's Pittsburgh, and and for Pittsburgh it it really is just and it's it's similar to Washington. They're they're losing games that they should win. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins having a bit of a struggle for themselves this season. And they're two and three. They're below 500. They lose that game in St. Louis. I understand St. Louis is at home, but still, for Pittsburgh, uh, you're looking for two points in that one. Uh, and and so we'll see how things go again from here. It's still early, but yeah, Pittsburgh, a major adjustment for Pittsburgh. Again, when I was looking at all the numbers tonight and going through all the stuff I'm tracking and all the eh, data, but yeah, Pittsburgh takes a, a big dive in, in the rankings. Number 23, moving up two spots. They move up. They don't move up that much. Uh, the Rangers game definitely helps them move up. San Jose, it's San Jose. Basically, if you beat San Jose, that that's you know great. You get that win. If you lose against San Jose, we have something to talk about because that's a problem. San Jose hasn't won a game yet, though. So for Nashville, they win the game tonight that they should have. They get back to 500. And can they get above 500? Can they navigate those better teams? Can they take care of a team like they did the Rangers the other night? Uh, some questions there, but with Saros and Lankin and as their goaltending tandem, they're they're probably going to stay in the hunt. Uh, number twenty-two, and this one this one I kind of had kind of had trouble figuring out. So Columbus drops two spots, even though they did get a couple of wins this week. Uh, the win over Minnesota, I mean, you know, they played very very well against Minnesota, um, but Minnesota takes a drop in this week's power rankings as well. Spoiler alert. Uh, Columbus ends up dropping just a couple of spots. They get passed by a couple of teams. But Columbus right now, 3-2, and two, they're in the mix. They're in the mix. And we'll see whether or not they end up in the top half of the board as soon as maybe next week, right? Uh, we've got the 16-game night on Tuesday. That's going to wreak havoc with my rankings. Then there's 11-game night on Thursday. And then, oddly enough, next Saturday, nine games. That's it, just nine. And I looked at that tonight, and I was like, well, at least there's nine games next week. That's a little better. Uh, number 21 on the board, dropping nine spots from last week is Edmonton. So Edmonton has dropped 18 spots in two weeks, and I guarantee you in the comments there's going to be a lot of, Edmonton should be in the bottom row. Edmonton should be lower than that. Um, the Oilers, it, it, is, it is a struggle, isn't it? 1-3-1, one, and one, they had a two-goal lead. They blew it. Uh, so they joined the ranks of teams that have blown two-goal leads with that two-goal lead they had on Winnipeg, and just it did not work. Uh, so for, for the Oilers... Uh, it, it is going to be a very interesting season if this continues. How long does Jay Woodcroft stick around? What kind of trades can be made? This team doesn't have cap space. What can you do to fix the Oilers if you're Ken Holland? And if the team continues to go in this direction, what kind of moves will will they will they move out all of management? Will things get blown up? Uh, you want to make sure you're trending in the right direction when you've got Dreisaitl's contract coming up in about a year and a half's time. And then you've got McDavid's not long after that. You've got to make sure they're happy. So Edmonton has to be trending in the right direction. Uh, number 20 on the board. Dropping three spots from last week. Calgary. Uh, the Flames, uh, it's been an up and down start for them. So they're right around the middle of the board. Uh, for both Alberta teams, this isn't what they've been looking for in terms of the start to the season. But hey, you know, when it's the Heritage game, if they're still next to each other in the power rankings board, they could be fighting it out for 20th. Right? So uh, for the Flames, um, 
couple of setbacks for them and just in general uh, not the kind of week I think they would have wanted the talent's still there uh, but they're not getting some of the numbers that they would want from guys who are getting paid a lot of money and that's really an issue for Calgary and it's it's definitely something that once we get a few more weeks into the season I can look at uh, which teams are not getting the bang for their buck from their players who are getting paid big money uh, number 19 dropping four spots from last week Winnipeg so with the win over Edmonton, they basically keep themselves out of the bottom row. With the, the comeback win over, over Edmonton, they keep themselves ahead of Edmonton. They're mildly ahead of Calgary right now. I know Calgary beat them. Because, uh, again, we're already five games, six games into the season for some teams. If we get into, well, if this team beat this team, they can't be ahead of that team. It just, the, the rankings become just, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute mess. So, Winnipeg ends up dropping. Uh, they're out of the top two rows. This is mildly concerning if you're a Canadian hockey fan, right? Because you got Montreal bottom row, all right, but then you got three more teams already, and we're not even into the top two rows yet. So Canadian teams, bit of a struggle here so far to start the season. Number 18, moving up three spots from last week, Arizona. The Coyotes are going to be a tough team to beat all year. I, I don't know that they're going to win any games in Laffers or anything like that, but I don't think they're going to get blown out in any games either. They're playing their their systems. They're doing it quite well. Today's win over Anaheim was not spectacular, but they're 3-2. and two. They were 2-2 two and two on their road trip to start the season, and now they win their home opener for the first time since 2017. So there's a reason to be optimistic if you are a fan of the Arizona Coyotes. And I, I don't know when the last time was that I said that. Maybe four years ago, three, four years ago. Uh, I remember when they got into the playoffs via the play-in round in 2020. There was some optimism there, and then, of course, that didn't last very long. But, yeah, Arizona's at least got a good on-ice product right now. Number 17, dropping one spot from last week, Minnesota. So Minnesota's out of the top 16. Uh, troubling game tonight against Columbus. Very troubling game against Columbus. Uh, they're 2-2-1 two, two and one to start the season. And, I mean, if you're a Wild fan and you're, you're, you're kind of concerned, I'm right there with you. A Wilder team that I wanted to see do, do really, really well. And don't tell my wife. Both of her teams are in the third row. I'm going to be sleeping outside. But anyways, Minnesota, I'm just kidding. She, she, would, she would probably argue that one or the other is probably too high and I'm being generous. But uh, for, for Minnesota, number 17 is the spot for them. I, I hope they can get things. That, that effort tonight against Columbus just... I, I couldn't have them in the top 16. Number 16, moving up three spots from last week, Tampa. Uh, it is faint praise for Tampa to have them in 16th. But I will say this, you know, they got outshot badly tonight. Johansson's been good. They they knew something here, right? Tampa Bay now 2-2-2 two, two, and two to start the season. Is that record good enough? No. But we are now two weeks into about two weeks into the season. We know that they're going to be missing Vasilevsky for the first two months approximately. And so far... They're 500. They're 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. That is, you know, 50% of the points they could get, they've got. And if they can get a couple of games above 500 and stay in that mix, and then Vasilevsky comes back, they're going to look brilliant. So Tampa Bay, top 16, and they they lost the lead against Toronto tonight. And, of course, they, they lost that game in extra time. But, yeah, they're, they're top 16. Number 15, moving up seven spots, seven spots from last week is Florida. So they had the 0-2 start. They've been 2-1 and since then. They lost tonight against Vancouver, which I thought was indicative of... That there, there might be an issue on the Bobrovsky side of things early in the season. But again, you know, they'd won two in a row coming into that game against Vancouver. And so they end up 15th on the board. I, I do think that Florida's trending in the right direction. Uh, just Vancouver really desperately needed that game. They had lost a couple in a row. They, they really needed to get a win there. And they got it. So number 14 on the board, dropping three spots last from from where they were last week is Vancouver. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, as previously mentioned, they did lose a couple of games to start the week. So Vancouver, uh, last last week was number no Vancouver's number 13. All right. So here we go. Number 13 is Vancouver. They dropped three spots from last week. They were number 10 last week. Now the question becomes, what do you think number 14 is? What would the secret team in 14th place be? All right, and with Vancouver, I'll say this. 
Um, with the win in Florida tonight, I'm hoping that's a sign that, you know, the, the worst of it's behind them with that Philadelphia effort. That was awful. So who's in 14th place? Not Philadelphia. Nope. Uh, the team I accidentally skipped, and it's a first. It doesn't happen very often. It's the New York Islanders. The Islanders stay in the same spot as last week. Uh, they did lose that game against Buffalo tonight. Uh, but in general, you know, they're playing relatively well. Uh, the game against New Jersey, well, that was that was Jack Hughes. That was just Jack Hughes doing Jack Hughes things. You can control Jack Hughes for a while. You can't control him for a full game. And so for the Islanders, I give them credit for getting a point there. And sure, they lost against Buffalo, but Buffalo had to have that game. We are already at the point in the season where you could feel that desperate hockey right from the opening whistle. I felt that with Buffalo tonight. And for the Islanders, they weren't quite as desperate on the desperate meter. So they're 2-1-1 one, and one to start the year. Number 12, moving up six spots from last week, Ottawa. Now, did they get schooled today by Detroit? Yes. Are people overreacting? Yeah, a little bit. It's one game. Uh, Ottawa's still 3-2 and two to start the season. And they've looked very good. They've looked fast. Uh, the way that they took apart the Washington Capitals was both kind of depressing for fans of the Capitals and impressive for people who've been waiting for a while for the Ottawa Senators to get good. So it, it does feel like the Ottawa Senators right now are trending in the right direction. They are they are usually a team that gets off to a very slow start. They have not got off to a slow start. That game against Detroit was a very good game. Uh, Detroit just, they really wanted it. Just really, really strong, desperate hockey by the Detroit Red Wings. So I didn't penalize Ottawa with that one. Uh, number 11 on the board, same spot as last week. LA Kings. So the Kings stay just outside the top 10. Uh, the game against Boston tonight, uh, they, they played well, but Boston in the end ended up controlling things and, and taking that game home. So for the LA Kings, they end up 11th on the board uh, for the second straight week. It's rare that the team's in, in the same spot for two straight weeks. Uh, for the Kings, they are currently 2-2-1, two, two, and one, so they've won less than half their games, but again, losing against Boston... I don't penalize a team for losing against an undefeated team. Um, and yeah, there you are. Uh, number 10. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I demand a recount. Moving up 19, 19. Because of the fact that it's so early in the season, it comes down to this. Philadelphia takes care of things when they've needed to this week. And the way they played against Dallas, the way they controlled the Vancouver Canucks as well, just the way Florida's or Florida, the way Philadelphia is playing right now under John Tortorella is really, really impressive. Uh, that the way that Couturier's played coming back, Atkinson, I mean, I knew that would help their scoring. I knew that it helped their team a bit. I had no idea how much. So years ago, I would always say Couturier was their MVP. Couturier's their MVP as long as he's healthy and in the lineup. Uh, I think the Flyers are going to continue surprising people. They're three one and one. Uh, I could not justify having them in the bottom row. Can't happen. Uh, so maybe this is Philadelphia's week in the top 10. Maybe next week they drop, but uh, the work ethic is there. The goaltending tonight was not great, but they still got a point out of it. Uh, they, they willed themselves to get a point. They had three shorthanded goals against Dallas. So yeah, Philadelphia is finding ways to get points, and three out of five games this year, they found a way to get a win. Uh, number eight, dropping five spots from, or number number nine, dropping one spot from last week. Yeah, I might be a little tired. These things happen. So the Rangers drop out of the top row. Uh, they don't drop any further than just the one spot. Um, and again, for the New York Rangers, they're three and two to start the season. What's impressive is they're three and two to start the season. Jonathan Quick had the win tonight. Shesterkin hasn't played that well. So. I look at a team that's having a three and two start, and I think, you know, with their goaltending not being what it should be, well, that should trend in the right direction, right? So Shesterkin's numbers can't stay this miserable, and I, I like the Rangers' chances going forward. Uh, so the Rangers stay in the top ten. Um, again, when you're when you're looking at it, you've got teams that are three and two, teams that are two and three, teams two one and one. It it is still tough to really measure teams and have an exact science of any of it, but the Rangers stay in the top nine. Uh, number eight, as I said, dropping five spots from last week, Carolina. What a rough road trip. So they have the one game at home, and then they go out to California, and then they're in Seattle, and then they're in Colorado. Uh, Seattle was desperate for a win when they got there. Colorado's a machine. Um, they're having trouble with their goaltending. They're having trouble with star players getting hurt. 
Uh, it, you name it right now, Carolina, they're in it. And, and yet, and yet they're three and three. So their record is still three and three. This road trip has been very difficult for them. Um, this is a road trip they're going to look back on and say that was a learning experience because learning experiences are never fun. But I, I do still think Carolina will get it together and they'll stop allowing six goals in a game and the offense will stay. Or at the very least, the offense should mostly stay. But again, it, it's tough. I do feel bad for Carolina right now because this road trip, uh, just looking at, at the frequency of the games and where they're playing and remembering with the time change, and it's, it's just, it's got to be really difficult. There's, there's no routine to any of it. Number seven, so still in the top row here. And this might be the first time this team's been in the top row. In fact, their fans by now in this video are going to be like, he's forgotten us. He's going to have to adjust a bunch of teams up because Detroit can't be in the top row. Well, I think I think this is the first time this has happened. I want to say in the entire time I've done power rankings. Because when I started doing power rankings, Detroit wasn't very good. Uh, and now Detroit is very good. They're playing quite well. And so they end up seventh on the board. Uh, congratulations to the Red Wings. They move up six spots. The previous week they moved up seven spots. That's 13 spots they've moved up in two weeks. And again, there will still be the, but they should be higher. There's always there's always those comments. So the Red Wings end up in the top row. Whether or not they stay here this week will tell us. Uh, we do have the 16 game night on Tuesday, so we'll see what happens there. And again, that's going to create havoc with these rankings at all uh, as well. But uh, right now, Detroit at four and one, they look like the real deal. Uh, we'll know when they get those long road trips and when they're playing against the real contending teams where they're at. But so far, so good. Uh, number six, dropping four spots from last week is Toronto. Uh, so Toronto, uh, an up and down week, and it honestly could have been worse, but they had the comeback victory against Tampa Bay tonight, so that's good. Uh, but they got handled by the Flo by the Flor uh, Florida Panthers. Um and, of course, they, they did not beat Chicago a week ago either. So Toronto's had their, 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 their issues over the last little bit here. They stay in the top row. I still think they're going to be fine. Uh, that comeback win against Tampa Bay, maybe that ends up being the start of a turnaround for Toronto. But, yeah, they're, they're outside the top five for this week. We'll see where they're at next week. Uh, number five, moving up one spot from last week, New Jersey. Uh, the, you know, the scary thing with New Jersey is that I, I really think Hughes is capable of, of a lot. And I mean Jack Hughes. Now, Luke Hughes is as well. He got his first power play goal in the NHL this week. Uh, but yeah, Jack Hughes, 130 points. He could do that. Yep. Um, 120, I think, is at the very least within reach uh, of, of his skill level. His skill level uh, could very well put him into that 120-point range. I don't think he'll threaten... McDavid, I think as long as, now McDavid got hurt in the game tonight, as long as McDavid's not out for a while, uh, McDavid likely still ends up winning the Art Ross, we all act surprised, but I think Hughes is going to give him a run for his money, I do, and I, I think this is this is going to be a fun season, uh, New Jersey, I'm still very bullish on them, clearly, uh, even though their record at this point is 2-1-1, one, and one. but I, I still think they're playing well, and, and I think uh, they played better this week than last week, thus the moving up. Number four. And this one's tough. So Dallas. Dallas is 3-0-1. But twice now, they've had two goal leads and blown two goal leads against Vegas and then against Philadelphia. Um, they allowed three shorthanded goals against Philadelphia. Not acceptable. But they won the game in overtime. So Dallas moves up one spot to number four. I, I have some concerns with Dallas. I have some tremendous concerns with Dallas. But they're winning. They're getting the points. They've recorded seven out of a possible eight points so far. So Dallas is one of those teams that if it starts going in the other direction, they could go through a big drop next week. So don't be surprised if Dallas loses a couple of games if all of a sudden they're down in that second row. Because, again, the results tell me, yeah, that they, they have to be in the top five. But when I look at how they're playing, I do have some, some concern there. So the three teams left are the three teams that are undefeated. Number three. Boston. I did not expect Boston uh, to have a start like this. Now, they're 4-0. Uh, and, and as I keep saying, the hockey may not be the prettiest of hockey, but it, it, is, it is still winning hockey. And so the Bruins, who started last season 12-0, well, now they've started this season 4-0. And there's a lot of attitude. I get the feeling that Marshawn is new captain. He's taking this deadly seriously. 
and he is he has some intensity to his game. As I said, if if you saw tonight's game against LA, he kind of said something on the way by the bench. And just in that moment, I thought, you know, he he's really dialed in. He's really when Marshawn's intense and he's dialed in, um, the attitude comes through and it shows with him getting goals and points and taunting a little bit here and there and just some and and obviously when they're losing and he he goes over the top and overboard that's where he can be a bit of a distraction that Marshawn has not showed up this year and they're 4-0 it's not a coincidence that that's been the case um so I, I'm, I'm very confident and the goaltending has been stellar throughout all four games so it, it's bad news for the rest of the NHL uh number two on the board moving up two spots from last week Colorado so the abs are five and zero to start the season and the weird thing with Colorado is, I don't know if they've played their best hockey yet. I, I feel like they're they're still starting to round into form. Again, that's bad news for the rest of the National Hockey League. But the 2022 Stanley Cup champions kind of look like they want the Stanley Cup again. Like, okay, we had a year away from the Stanley Cup. Can we have the Stanley Cup back now? So the Avs looking very, very good. Very impressive, which leaves us with just one team left. And still number one, the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, 6-0 and to start the season. The number one team in the league. A ridiculously good start to the season for um, any talk of a Stanley Cup hangover. Nope. Uh, and, and the weird thing with Vegas, as much like Colorado, I don't know if they're playing their best hockey yet. I keep saying in reviews, I don't know if they've broken a sweat yet. I, I feel like they're kind of on cruise control. They're getting their victories. And... It, it could get scarier from here. So I don't know how far this winning streak to, to start the season is going to go for Las Vegas. It probably ends this week, to be honest. Uh, it's difficult to win that many games and keep that kind of momentum going. But are they going to win the division? It, probably. Um, I think the slow start by Edmonton, if Edmonton doesn't get their, their you-know-what together, it's, it's going to be a, a runaway uh, at, atop the division for Vegas pretty quickly. Because when you look at the rest of the Pacific Division... Nobody even shows up until LA at 11, Vancouver at 13, and then there's nobody else in the top two rows. So Vegas could very well just cruise to the division title and maybe to the to the conference as well, although Colorado will have something to say about it. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to tell me that I'm wrong. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe either. Uh, if you're just browsing your way through or just because you feel like it. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.